Good evening and welcome to What's Your Story. My guest tonight is Joni Sutter, Executive Director and CEO of Nutmeg Public Access Television, which is located here in Farmington, Connecticut. Over the past year, the COVID-19 virus has presented many difficult challenges to various businesses and organizations. Over the next half hour, we will discuss its impact on this organization. Welcome to the show, Joni. Thank you so much for having me. We, we have been trying to hook up an interview for a long time, haven't we? We have, and it took this, and we're on our new set, and I have to say that you are our first pilot driving this new set, and we're so excited about that, and thank you for inviting me on What's Your Story? My pleasure. Why don't we tell the audience a little bit about you? Are you a Connecticut native? I am born and raised in Bristol. Bristol? I, yes, the Bristol I am, Stomp area. Yes. <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> yes, born and raised in Bristol, and I attended Bristol schools. All right, I always ask my guests this. What was your high school mascot? It was the Lancers. Uh, Lancers, yes, the Lancers. The Lancers, right. Bristol Eastern High School. And uh, where'd you go to college? You go? Actually, I pivoted. I studied nursing. I, my, my focus was on nursing yes. and my tail end of, of uh, my high school years. And I spent some time uh, studying at the hospital, in the hospital setting, see, seeing if that's where I wanted to go. And I decided to pivot a bit and went into the insurance industry. And I started with the Travelers, and that lasted only about a year, and I migrated over to the Aetna. And they kept me for 16. Okay. And I was there um, mostly in marketing, and then I transitioned to a financial role and worked for the treasurer of the company when I was completed with my, my time there. Now, did marketing involve a lot of uh, public stuff? And yes. It did, it okay. Did. It so did. that sort of prepared you for? It did, and you know, I have to say, back then when I was there, we called it the Mother Aetna. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <clears throat> and I'm dating myself here, um, James, but when you got into a, a corporation like that, you stayed. Uh, you know, you stayed there, you were happy to be there, and it was Mother Aetna, and they provided their employees with uh, many perks and benefits to be there. There were 10,000 in the building that I was in, uh, and yes, we were very involved with uh, marketing and communications, and it gave me uh, an incredible foundation for the work that I'm doing now. How long have you been here at Nutmeg Public Access TV? I've been here since 1994. Wow. Now, in my current role as executive director since 2005. Okay. But one thing that you may not know about me, James. All right. Is that uh, I started here as a volunteer. I did not know that. And working uh, as I was in the corporate environment, working very long hours um, and working in the financial field, I needed to play a little bit. And I needed to start my creativity going and get those creative juices going. So sure. I studied with a floral designer and I loved it so much that I did my own TV show at Nutmeg TV. And it was called the Hydrangea House. My and favorite I, flower. Is it? Absolutely. Oh, I never knew that. Absolutely. They dry so nicely when you dry them upside Absolutely. down. Absolutely. So I started with the Hydrangea House, and every week I would do a different floral arrangement that people could follow along, they could buy the materials, and, and they could make that too. I did wedding work and all different kinds of things. And that kind of gave me a good balance between my work and my creativity. And uh, then the board of directors had an opening, and they asked me if I would like to serve on the board of directors. So I served on the board of directors. Had to give up my show at that point, because we don't allow 
uh, the folks that are on our board to have any conflict of interest sure. in the decisions that they're making. So I became a, a board director and was here in that capacity until 1994 when I joined Nutmeg in a marketing role. Marketing and communications, marketing community outreach, uh, you know, getting our message out to the sure, schools and sure. municipalities of people. That's what I started doing here. Terrific. Mm -hmm. no, I, no, I didn't know that you had a show here and you began as a volunteer. I did. So I get, completely get, how it is to take classes here, to sure. come through the system sure. here, sure. what works, what sure. doesn't work. And to be honest with you, we reinvent ourselves all the time at Nutmeg yes. TV. It's a constant work in progress. It is. Yes. If we don't, if as a company, if you don't, or as a person, I believe. That's right. You, you become obsolete. You do. Absolutely. You have to continue to evolve, re -evolve, look at everything differently, look through new eyes, get feedback. We always ask for feedback from our producers and our clients to say, what are, you know, we're in it every day. What are we not seeing? What are we not getting? Sure. Um, and also, I knew what I needed as an employee from the board of directors and from my boss, and so I think about that when I think about what staff may require from me. You know, our viewing audience out there may not actually understand what public access television really is. Could you explain that, and could you also explain how it works? Absolutely. In the 1970s, cable TV came into being, and that was a big deal. And the FCC at the You mean bye-bye rabbit ears. <laughs> yes, and I remember those. You know, it used to get channel 3, 8, 30. There was no Fox 61 at the time, right? 3, 8, 30. Um, you know, the Lawrence Welk show on Sunday night, and, you know, uh, the... FCC on the federal level said, in order to have a democratic society, you need to have views and opinions from everybody. And the, the model doesn't allow that. So we're going to require you, cable companies, to make a space on the system for three channels, public, education, and government. And anyone can come in and use those channels and produce programming. You, you must you live in a certain area to be at a certain access channel or well this is nationwide okay okay but there are franchise areas okay so at nutmeg tv we handle the towns of avon berlin bristol burlington canton farmington new britain and plainville i've said that a few hundred times yes, so absolutely. i've got that down, so got that down but yeah. we're you know we're centrally located here now when someone comes in our doors can i say james do you have cable because if you don't have cable, you can't utilize it. We don't say that. We say, if you're a resident in our eight-town service area, welcome. Okay. All right. Yeah, welcome. Come in. And, and it's a free service. Yes. Uh, it's here for the community to use, and we encourage them to, uh, to use both our remote equipment as well as our studio equipment, okay. which we are today. Today is April 1st. It is. I understand that's a very special date here at Nutmeg. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about Absolutely. that, please? Absolutely. This is our birthday. Happy birthday, Nutmeg TV. We're 31. Whoa. Yeah, 31 years old. Now, today. didn't you used to be in Plainville? We were. You, and here's another thing you probably don't know. You're sh I'm sharing all this stuff with okay. you, uh, which is wonderful. Did you know that we started in the Robrand building on Cook Street in Plainville, and that is the same building that ESPN started in? I did not know that. And we were there at that time. And I always joke when I see them, and I say, look where you are, look, look where, where we, we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was literally when you opened the door yes. to the studio, you know, when you open the door to come into Nutmeg TV, you were in the studio. Wow. So yeah. we had to lock the door during a production to make sure that people weren't coming in. But it was a very small space, and from there we migrated over to Plainville. And we loved Plainville. We were on 58 West Main Street. We yeah. loved it. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful building, and we were right there on Main Street. So we got people that were walking, riding bikes. It's much different being in the downtown vibe. Uh, the problem was we were renting. Uh -huh. And we needed to be able to control our expenses. And we wanted to control how much we spent for snow plowing and um, lawn mowing and 
Uh, being an, under a landlord, it's very difficult to control those things. So we had to look for a building. And unfortunately, even though we worked with economic development in Plainville, who were wonderful, thank you, Plainville, uh, we weren't able to find a building. We either found 50,000 square feet, which was way too big, <laughs> way too big. Or, or too small. So yeah. we needed an area. And we have about uh, 9,000 square feet here now. Okay. You know, Joni, the COVID-19 virus has, you know, altered every aspect of our lives. I mean, there's no question. You know, would you please talk about its impact on you and your staff over the past year? Specifically, let's start out with its financial impact. How has COVID affected you financially? Well, I don't think that we've seen yet the downside of that, and I'll tell you why. We are funded by cable subscriber dollars. So in other words, if you have cable TV, a very small portion, 68 cents, from your cable bill comes here to fund Nutmeg TV and allows the public to use us as a free service. As people continue to cut the cord, they're not cutting the cable cord because there's still an internet cord coming. Mm -hmm. And many people are getting programming that way. You know, they're watching their programming on YouTube, which is great. I do the same thing. Uh, they're watching their programming on some streaming services. But they're having to cut some other utilities mm -hmm. to make it more affordable because maybe they've been on layoff, maybe they've been furloughed. Um, you know, they're just trying to cut corners. And I have a feeling next year, we're gonna, we, there was a 23% decline um, the last uh, numbers that came out, and I have a feeling we're gonna see a, a much larger decline the next time. So we're working very hard uh, with our state legislators yes. uh, on those kinds of, of things, yeah. but uh, that's where I see the, the downfall coming. How has it uh, impacted your ability to plan for the future? You know, I, I think it's done the opposite. I think that this, there's a new way of doing business now, and we've learned that. Um, big business and small business. Don't forget we're a nonprofit here. So uh, from our perspective, uh, we're, we're Zooming to do meetings. You can get in more meetings than you can if you're driving here and there and, and having meetings. Uh, so uh, the productivity uh, rate has gone up for us, and the amount of work that we're doing has increased. Uh, so I think it's, it's really done the opposite. It's, it showed us how we can move faster and further ahead than we were doing before. Do you think we would have done that without COVID? I don't. I know we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have taken I, that bite. No, I don't think so, mm -hmm. because it was, we knew what business was, right? You show up for a meeting. This is what it is. This is what it is. Uh, what do you mean I have to Zoom? You know, I don't, I don't know what that is. I'm not comfortable with it. Well. And, and to be honest with you, when I'm sitting with you now, I yeah. can see your body mannerisms, I can yeah. see your smile yeah. without a mask, you yeah. know. On Zoom, you're only, you, you wonder, am I gonna pick up the nuances to know what to say um, next? Body language is so important when yeah. you're physically in meetings with people. Yeah. But uh, we're able to do so much more. Um, in fact, it's caused that side of the problem where we've had to put the brakes on and say, hey, wait a minute, where's the balance here? We have to learn now how to slow down enough too to be able to have a good home work-life balance. It's a really good segue into the next question I have. How has it impacted your employees emotionally? Well, here at Nutmeg TV, we pride ourselves on really business first and um, you know, we don't get too, too much into people's personal lives. Sure. Uh, however, I do think that uh, connectivity is so important. We're human beings, we right, are. James? Absolutely. And we're not, you know, we're not isolated individuals. We like connection. We like to talk to each other. We like to laugh with each other, and we like to see our clients. Most importantly, and so I think that's been the biggest impact for us is not being able to see the James Reads and. Um, you know, see, even though the productions are happening, we've done over 235, uh, if, I'm, if I'm quoting me correctly here, uh, programs virtually or with remote equipment, but not being able to see you folks on a regular basis has been an impact for us. You know, when COVID hit and people started talking Zoom and uh, 
whatever that other stuff is. I was, I felt like I was a caveman, you know, like I didn't understand any of that stuff. And I, I'm with you on the Zoom meetings. I don't like the Zoom meetings. I, I'm just, no offense Zoomers, uh, but I, I just, it's not my thing. This is my thing. Yes. This is how I roll. Yes. This is how I get it done. Yes. I understand that I got all the advantages of it. I got it. But it's, it's not me. And it, you know, what unexpected challenges did COVID present to you as a leader here? How to navigate. How to steer, how to, steer, how to navigate this environment to keep you safe, me safe, and the equipment and the facility, and we're state certified COVID safe environment. Okay. I didn't know if you knew that. What does that mean? That means we had to go through a certification process with the state, okay. and we had to promise that we would follow certain protocols. So when you leave today, the chair that you're sitting in is washed down. The, everything you touch is washed down. How you came in, how you exited the building. Do I keep um, my booties? I, I can't keep my booties. You can keep your booties. We <laughs> made him wear booties because you, you can't see this at home, but we have an incredibly beautifully waxed floor. It looks like Jeopardy. Yeah. And and we, we just, you know, we don't want any marks on it we have to keep it pristine sure, and so sure. we gave James booties and yes as long as you don't wear them and stop and shop I think you'll be okay <laughs> but the the it's how to navigate that how to say okay you can only have one guest you know um, how do we keep everybody safe and I think that's been a, a big challenge and the only way we're going to learn that is to begin to do it and see where we need to tweak along the way well you know what are some lessons you've learned in dealing with the virus? What, what lessons would you say? Well, if, if I could share personally and then professionally, working from home, and I work two days a week here in the office okay. and three days a week at home. Okay. Uh, if I'm needed more, I'm here, but uh, I am hearing the birds sing. And I'm opening the window and I'm feeling the warm breeze across my face. And that's something that I haven't had. And I realized that I haven't had that. And I'm seeing that my employees are also experiencing that kind of thing. Where before I would come in in the morning, I would go home, it would be dark. I would never smell the fresh air unless I went out to the mailbox to check the mail. I was from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and then all the way home thinking about it. Now, am I working at home? very hard I am. In fact, when you have a home office, it's hard to leave for the day. Yes. Because you yes. go in the kitchen, and you're like, oh no, I forgot, and you run yeah. back, and yes. you run back, and yes. there are yes. there are whole classes now about how to step away from the computer. Yes, right? yes. Because it's right there. You wake up in the morning, it's right there. Um, but that has been my biggest takeaway, is there's, I saw a bun, a baby, my mother rabbit with her babies last summer. I was able to, you know, hear the bird song and I stopped for a minute and I smell that air and I, I it's, it's just been a wonderful thing. And I think it's showing us maybe what the Italians know, James, I don't know, over in Italy, where they, they, they focus on siesta. They focus on the balance between work and home. And they, they're not like Americans who are on this treadmill that never ends. And so that's been a really positive takeaway for me for COVID. And professionally, I've brought that into the arena and said to the employees, hey, get your work done, do what you need to do, go home, and then jump on later in the evening to make up your hours if you want. So you have more quality of life, because isn't that what it's about? I understand we have a new baby in the family. We here. do. Absolutely. And, uh, Perhaps dad, who's probably listening in the control room, <laughs> will go home and play more yeah. with, I think it's Gabriel? Is it that, is. It is it Gabriel. Is. Go, yeah, I, I remember little angel. Dad, dad I little, remember. It's yeah, Gabriel. Our so, angel Gabriel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So go home and play with Gabriel. <laughs> yes. That's right. And isn't that what it's about? Listen to his squeal. That's yes. right. You're yeah. not going to hear that forever. No, isn't it true? It's, it's fleeting, it's, yeah. yes. Fleeting. Well, we'll give you a chance to toot your horn here. What makes Nutmeg's public access television different from other 
Public Access TV. I think we're the best. Ah, <laughs> you want to tell us why? I do want to tell you why. <laughs> um, we're, we're a nonprofit third party run. Okay. Some public access are run by the cable companies themselves. Did you know that? No, I did not. And so maybe um, different energies and efforts are placed there than the third party nonprofit, which is. You know, we're separate from the cable company. I'm not a Comcast employee, in other words. Yes. And so I think that um, we are a regional facility, so that means we have 82,000 households that we service. Uh, so we have more uh, available to us as far as resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a larger budget than some of the single towns. And I have a phenomenal staff. Terrific. Phenomenal. Our technical expertise here under Chris Bennett uh, has far surpassed what I think uh, we've ever had here at Nutmeg, and I think that's what puts us in a leadership position. You know, how important is it for the community to, to get involved, and what are some volunteer opportunities here, and do, do you provide training? It's essential that they're involved because we're here for you. We're here for the community, so they, they have to participate and we do offer classes uh, in all aspects of TV production and we're going to be soon offering some podcasting that's very popular now yes, I'm learning indeed. about it my staff is teaching me about it Brian especially uh, and so we do offer classes and we do encourage volunteers it's a two-edged sword right now because of the COVID. Mm. It's very difficult for us to be able to wipe down the equipment after each use. Yes, absolutely. Because it's gonna, yes. it's gonna damage it. Yes. So we're not allowing our volunteers in right now for hands-on directing and things like that, but that's soon to change once more are vaccinated. You know, um, you know, technology, right? Like this wonderful new set and these cameras here. You know, I can remember a day when you needed four or five people in here to do things, and now one person can basically do it from the control room. What role did you find technology played in making your job easier or more difficult? Well, we have to s keep up with trends. And as you've noticed, it's been like lightning speed. Uh, the tech has just zoomed ahead and in order for us to keep up with that and stay current, don't forget, we have to supply our signal to the head end of the cable companies for distribution, both Frontier and Comcast. Uh. And they require a certain tech in order to take and, and bring out to your home. So we've had to stay current with that. We've had to stay current with uh, the latest and greatest. And as soon as a iPhone comes out, you know how it is. The next one's already the next coming one, it's, out. It's already abs so, obsolete, yeah. Yes. Wow. Do we have a way of tracking our viewers? Do we know the numbers of people? Feedback. We don't have a Nielsen rating no. uh, system with, with access, but um, we do it through feedback. So when you're in Stop and Shop and people say, I saw that show, or that was a really, really interesting point. And I think having all of our programming out on YouTube yes. has really pushed us out there because we're pushing everything on social media, Facebook, YouTube, as well as our channels to help uh, programs like yours, what's your story? You know, you have a guest come in, you're not only hitting our households, but you're circling out to a much wider audience. Final question for the interview tonight. Do you think public access TV can not only survive, but thrive in this environment? Absolutely, absolutely. And I can tell you that I had a state meeting on Monday and they were talking about all the ways that we have bridged the gap in order to keep our municipalities connected with our residents and our schools and uh, it's it's we're essential and vital to the community so use us use us and use us well thank you Joni thank you for having me it's a pleasure and an honor that's all the time we have for the show tonight uh, I want to thank my guest Joni Sutter for being here on this inaugural event here at the station I'm so proud to have been a part of it what's your story you know everybody has a story what's yours until next time I'm James Ransom Reed Jr. Good night.